Hi, everyone, and welcome to our information session on the Academy of the First College Year. We'll get started in just a moment. I wanted to welcome all of you. Thanks for joining us today. I'm going to go ahead and pull up our slides, and we'll introduce ourselves in just a moment. Hopefully, everyone's having a good day. Friday, I think it is probably for everybody, unless you're in a, a very far remote, remote place, and then maybe it's Saturday. <laughs> So we'll go ahead and get started. I am Stephanie, but from the Gardner Institute, and I'm joined today by several good colleagues who will be sharing a bit during this presentation. And I'm gonna go ahead and let them introduce themselves. Brent, would you like to start? Sure, thanks Steph. Uh, hello everyone, I'm Brent Drake. I'm the Senior Vice President for Operations and Research here at the Gardner Institute. And I will pass to my colleague, Dr. Steinkopf. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Sarah Steinkopf. I'm a fellow with the Garner Institute, and I will be one of the facilitators for the upcoming first year college, and I'm looking forward to um, seeing potentially any of you. Great, and we also have two other Gardner Institute colleagues, Katie Locke, who is our Director of Marketing and Communications, and Brittany, who is serving as our moderator today. She's the Assistant Director from marketing communications. So we should mention that we're recording this session and we'll be sharing with you a copy of the recording and also the slides as well. So feel free to relax. You don't have to take a lot of notes. And we also would welcome your comments and questions throughout the presentation. We really wanna hear from you and the questions that are at the forefront of your mind. And as I often say, whatever's on your mind is more important than what we prepared or planned to say. So feel free to ask the questions in the chat. We'll be happy to answer those as they come in. So ask away. So as I mentioned, um, we're from the Gardner Institute and the Gardner Institute is about 25 years old. Uh, we are located geographically in Brevard, North Carolina, although we have a distributed work staff. Uh, so we have people from across the country and we also have others beyond the United States. Uh, we have a fellow in Canada um, and others who work with us to help make this work possible. We are a nonprofit organization and we're squarely focused on working with institutions to help more students to be able to access and ultimately graduate from higher education. So our emphasis is on teaching, learning, retention and completion, all focused on or through the lens of equity and social justice. So we have a strong commitment. I think you'll see that too, as we talk more about our academy on the first college year. So these are our facilitators. I mentioned um, I'm Stephanie or Steph as I go by. Uh, Brent and Sarah have already introduced themselves and Felita unfortunately is under the weather. So she's not with us today, but she's one of our other wonderful facilitators for this particular academy. So we're grateful for the team of facilitators and for those who've been involved to date. So we want to begin by talking a little bit about the opportunity here. We know that probably you all are here because you are thinking about or concerned about supporting students in the first college year. And if you can see the screen in front of you, there is a quote, um, a passage actually from a preface um, in the book, the foundational book that was published in 1989 that was titled The Freshman Year Experience. And in this book and in this preface in particular, the authors note that as high school enrollments have declined, colleges have not only intensified their recruitment of prospective freshmen, but have also increased efforts to retain students once they've enrolled. Because retention research tells us that the first college year, college year is crucial to college success, we need to know more about who freshmen are and why they stay or leave. So although this was written quite a while ago now, we still have the same sorts of dilemmas that we're facing in, higher, in institutions of higher education. So we think that this particular challenge, this opportunity is one that's still very important and maybe even more so important or more important than it has been in recent years as our enrollments are beginning to decline. Our traditional quote unquote first year enrollment is declining. So we really need to spend time focusing on understanding who our students are, how they identify and thinking about how we can design or even redesign existing first year programs and services to support these students. Now we can go even further back in the research. If you're a, um, a first year experience geek like I am, <laughs> you can go way back. <laughs> but on the right-hand side of the screen, 
there um, was one of the first publications about the first year experience uh, was published in 1928. So we can go way back and we can trace the problem, the challenge back to the very early days um, of American higher education, well, the contemporary American higher education. And we can, we can see that this has long been a problem, but it's also important to think back because these programs and services focused on first year students have existed since the 1920s. And even beyond that, um, earlier in the 1890s uh, were the first examples of these programs and services. So there have been a lot of iterations of these initiatives over the years. And I think now it's ever more important to think again about who our students are, how they identify and how we can respond to their challenges in particular, and also their strengths. How can we really celebrate their assets and the, um, the strengths that they bring to our institutions and to our classrooms? That's why we're here. So I wanna invite you all, if you're willing to share in the chat your why. So why is it that you're compelled to be here and to find out more about our Academy on the First College Year? There were a few responses as, as some of you all registered for this session about your why, but I would invite you, the rest of you, anyone to share if you're willing some about why you're here. And I'll give you just a few moments to do that. All right, thank you to Cynthia for posting the first comment in the chat. We had a first year seminar in the past and now we wanna have it back. And she's from Quincy University. So thinking about how you can reintroduce the seminar and redesign it, so reinvigorate it as you bring it back to better serve your students at the institution. From Cameron, important to be able to support the students we admit at our colleges, regardless of their preparation level, absolutely. And that first year is so critical for students building self-efficacy and confidence. You know, I think to this point, uh, Cameron, one of our participants said last spring, you know, everybody has a first year experience and we should be intentional about it. So whether or not we're doing something to support our students in the first college year, they are having a first year experience. And so our focus should be on thinking about how we can help to be intentional, to communicate belonging, confidence and self-efficacy. From John, hey John, good to see you again. Looking at, or looking to improve outcomes for first year students across, oops, I scrolled too fast, across a variety of profiles. So adult students, those for whom English is a second language and transfer students, I love that. Having worked with and designed programs for these students myself, I feel very passionate as well about supporting all of the students and particularly those from different identities that we may not considered to be sort of in our traditional student profile. Edward says, I have a responsibility in redesigning my university's first year seminar. We're here to support you. I know that is no small task, but it, it's one that can be done with support. And Sophia said, I'm new in my position, eager to increase retention rates. I'm trying to reach students and make real connections. And I think that's at the heart of, of the work of many of us. And again, we're, we're here to support that as well. It can be a challenge, but not one that's um, insurmountable with support. So all of us as facilitators are here for our own sort of personal reasons. Each one of us has a personal reason that motivates us in addition to our bigger why as an organization because we wanna support the success of all students. I know for myself, I had a very difficult academic experience my first year of college. I essentially failed out and I was fortunate enough to get a second chance at another institution. And ever since then, I felt very passionate about supporting first-year students and have dedicated my career to that over the last 25 years. So we're all here for a big why. And I'm excited and uh, grateful for all of you to be in this space too, because it always feels good to share with others who are here for similar reasons. Um, it's, it's nice to be in this space together. So thank you all very much. So now we want to talk a bit about the Academy and I'm gonna actually turn it over to my colleague Brent 
um, to get us started, because at this point you may be wondering, um, what is this all about? What am I going to be expected to do? So Brent is gonna walk us through some of that. Brent, I'm gonna turn it over to you now. Thanks, Steph. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so in the academy, we're gonna work with a, a small team from your institution. I'll talk a little bit more about the team makeup in a little bit here. Um, but we're going to work with you to explore the foundational aspects of student success in the first college year. And we're going to draw from the research literature, the practice-based literature, um, uh, some, some recorded interactions with uh, um, uh, scholars that, that we work with, um, as well as uh, a couple of national data sources to help you uh, establish what we call a plan to plan. So it's kind of your initial steps on your plan to uh, design or redesign, depending on where you're at as an institution, the programs and services that are meant to help your first year students be most successful as, as they uh, enter your institution. Oh, we, yeah, sorry. Should have said if you can advance, Steph, thank you. Um, so there are four learning outcomes we want you to, to gain from uh, being within this. We want you to be able to know uh, some of the prime uh, theories and practices that have been related to student success in the first college year. Um, we want you to help be able to identify who your current students are that you're servicing and who they are more likely to be uh, in the future and what that means in terms of how uh, you need to work with them. Um, we want you to look at where you have institutional capacity now or where you need to develop it to help you uh, implement an effective first year experience strategy. Um, and then the last part of it, as I mentioned, we're gonna have you develop a plan to plan on how you're going to improve that experience for your students. And that's the ultimate deliverable that you will come away uh, from this. And will be our last session together will be the focus of what we do where you will actually present that out to us and your colleagues and uh, get feedback on uh, your first steps around your plan to plan. Want to advance the slide, Seth? And so I mentioned that uh, it's a small team that we work with from your campus, typically three to five uh, uh, members, um, but we have allowed it to get a little bit bigger than, than that if you need to. Um, but in terms of the people that we would like to see on that team, uh, the broad overview you can see there in bold, we say anyone who cares about the first college year. Uh, but to get a little more specific <laughs> around that, um, we really recommend having at least a faculty member who teaches introductory courses in, in the first year for your students. Um, anyone that is doing first year programming as, as a, a leader or a staff member in delivering it, they should be involved. Uh, we often recommend having a member of your institutional research staff uh, involved um, because there's gonna be a component where we talk about what's available on your campus in terms of knowing who your students are and, and how successful they are. Uh, members of the uh, provost office, so your chief academic officer's uh, uh, office. And then uh, we also recommend, if you can, having a student involved who um, is either a part of um, activities you do in the first year, like maybe an orientation leader or someone that leads a supplemental instruction or someone that serves as a peer mentor or all the kinds of students that are good to have involved, but really anyone who's kind of engaged in uh, helping to deliver that, that solid experience to your first year students. And so those, those kind of where we recommend you draw from, from the teams. So I'm going to turn it back over to Steph to talk about uh, what some of our uh, institutions who have participated in the academy, what they uh, chose to focus around their plan to plans. Thank you so much, Brent. So over, over the last month, we've been interviewing and surveying institutional members uh, from our participating institutions to find out 
more about the work that they've done. So the areas of focus that they've come into our, our academy with and then what they've done as a result. And so what you'll see on the screen, if you're able to see it, is a list of some of the things that they have focused on in terms of the experience in the academy. So we have um, upgrading. So beyond just a single solitary one semester course, but thinking about moving toward a more comprehensive approach, looking at expectations for first year seminar gateway courses. So connecting their gateway courses and first year seminars again, to create a more uh, coordinated and intentional experience rather than a, a first semester experience, so first year experience. They've also focused on how to take the best of what we do currently. Uh, so opt-in programs, programs that are not mandatory, programs that students can volunteer to be a part of and design something that's required for all first year students. Moving from talk to action, this is something that we've seen a few times coming up in both the survey and then in, in the interviews that have been conducted so far, is that there has been like a lot of rhetoric around the first year and a lot of good ideas too, but a lot of it hasn't been put into place in terms of taking action, creating programs and services that students would be, you know, sort of wrapped, we would wrap our arms around students uh, to really support them. So going from that talk to implementation, which is often the most difficult part of this work. Coordinating support and structure. And this has been a common theme too in our work. We've noticed that while we have, and this is really in the literature as well, if you look at any of the first year seminar experience literature, there's often a constellation of programs and services that support students in the first college year. However, oftentimes they're, they are disconnected, they're uncoordinated. And not because you know we we designed them to be so. It's just the way that they evolve. We design first year programs and services to fill gaps where they're needed. So what we see a lot of in the academy is this intentional focus on creating a coordinated solar system. Like here's our here's our plan. This is what we're going to do and how it's all connected and coordinated. And sometimes it's just communication. It's mapping. You know what you have already. But there's a lot of intentionality behind it, and that's what often institutions come to us wanting to focus on how can we be more intentional in our approaches so we can maximize the work that we're doing in support of first year students. Also, there's been a, a sort of a shift in um, the focus of some of our first year seminars and experiences, and we're seeing that kind of bear out um, in what we're doing in the academy. So there's um, long been a focus on helping students to be successful in college, but there is um, there's also more focus on belonging, um, both in the first term, but helping students to find belonging even beyond that. So get connected to their peer groups. And that's important, obviously, in the first college year, helping them to be prepared for the rigors of higher education. And sometimes that means designing programs and experiences that introduce students to those rigors earlier. So programs and services that engage students in undergraduate research in the first year or other kinds of experiences. So we see some of that help happening too. And then the lack of a comprehensive first year experience, again, connecting all of the components, that intentional holistic approach to the first year. So taking the constellation and making it more coordinated, you know, presenting students with a map and understanding where the different touch points are. So where students are being, um, you know, reached out to or connected and getting into the system uh, so they feel supported and, and to have a sense of belonging. So these are some of the things that we've seen. There are more, there are more themes that will come from the conversations that we're having and what we're learning about what institutions are doing with us and then after, so after they finish this engagement with us, but this gives a sense of some of what we're doing and seeing in the in the in higher education right now from the academy. And I see there's a comment from Sophia, the efforts uh, to reach students are disjointed yet well intentions, they absolutely are. Everyone does this you know, from a good place. We're all offering these programs and services again in support of first year students, but often they are disjointed. So just bringing the ideas, the services, the resources together can make a huge difference. I've seen that at many institutions you know, where I have worked and also those that I've consulted with and worked with in my role at the Gardner Institute. So it's not always about you know creating something new. Often it's about reimagining what you have, including making the connections clear between existing programs and services and that communication piece. 
And now I'm going to turn it over to our good colleague, Katie Locke, who's going to share with us the next steps and also some of the fee information. Katie? Thanks a lot, Steph. Um, so probably your next question is how much is it going to cost? The um, fees are based on your um, undergraduate enrollment. The bands are and fees are listed here. Um, those fees can be split into two payments in two fiscal years to make it um, a little less um, difficult for institutions. Um, the academy details, um, the academy is going to start on October 23rd. There is a list here of the synchronous dates and it will finish on November 21st. We will send out these slides so you'll have that information um, at your fingertips. And in order to apply, you will go to our platform, which is myjngi.org. And this will all be in the email we'll send you. And if you your institution is not involved, um, it hasn't been involved in the past, or you haven't been involved in one of our processes, you will have to create an account, and then you can go to the application. <clears throat> and you can go and see the application and look through the questions before you submit it. Um, I will say that it's about four to five questions, um, no more than 250 words on each question. We're really, we're not evaluating you. We're just looking to make sure that what your goals are for the academy match our goals as to what will happen in the academy. So we want to make sure it's a good fit. And as I said, we'll send an email. It will have the link to the application. It will have the dates and um, the these slides will be included as along with the recording. So if you want to share it, that information with um, any of your um, colleagues, you can. And um, I am not going to go through this list of processes, academies, and communities of practice. Um, there was a time where it was just a couple, but as you can see, that that list is growing. But those are there. And um, I always like to say at this point, if you're not sure what is the right place for you to be with the Gardner Institute, we would be happy to have a conversation and sort of talk you through the different things we offer and help make sure that you're in the right place. I think, and we are, this is my last um, <laughs> uh, um, little stick for this, but um, we are having a symposium. We have an annual symposium, which is part workshop and part conference. So there are six tracks. One of them is the first year, and you can do sort of a deep dive into the first year in that track. And then there are concurrent sessions, over 60 concurrent sessions, um, and you can go and participate in the conference. And that's October 9th to the 11th. It actually is the 10th and the 11th. It starts... Um, on the morning of the 10th um, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And um, we would love to have you join us there if that's something um, you're interested in or available for. Yeah, and we have some pre-conference workshops before that or pre-symposium workshops. And we'll throw a link into, the, um, into that email just in case anybody's interested. And I think now we would love to hear, thank you, Katie. I think we'd love to hear from you all to see if there are questions or things that um, you'd like us to revisit, maybe that we've shared previously. We would be happy to stop the recording. So if there are things that you'd like to ask that are more sensitive or that you don't wish to have preserved forever, just let us know, just send a message in the chat. We'll be very happy to pause the recording. I know some of the questions that we received in the registration had to do with what institutions are doing uh, currently in the first year. So we gave you a small glimpse of that through the work of the participants in the academy, the survey results that I shared. There's also a question about uh, getting students engaged, you know, how to, how to increase intent, attendance. Um, and I'm assuming that's within first year seminar courses or first year courses, and then also how to evaluate some of these programs. We haven't talked about the evaluation part, but that's something that we can do in the context of the academy, if you're interested. And 
And if there are no questions, we're also happy to stop the recording and hang out for a few minutes so you can ask any personal questions that you may wish to. Um, Sophia had a question about the mapping. Are you talking about the, like creating a map of the programs and services at, in the first year? I just enabled it for everyone to unmute yourselves if you would like to ask a question live. Thank you, Brittany. Um, Sophia said in terms of preventing programs from feeling repetitive. So I this is beyond the academy officially, but you know, you could come into this work, you know, with with that goal. So understanding better and sort of creating a comprehensive list or a map of all the programs and services aimed at first year students. That's one of the first things that I did when I was a first year experience program director. And given the charge of creating a first year seminar, I said, I need to figure out what's happening already in the first year. So I, I set on that path to find out and to figure out exactly where the things resided and also um, what the outcomes were, like who was being served, like which particular student populations, and then what were some of the intended outcomes so to create sort of a, an, a map for myself. We don't do that in the academy per se, but you could do that. That could be part of your plan to plan to you know create that sort of a, a tool that you could use and we can help guide you personally. It's not an activity that we're doing officially. We also have a first year redesign process where you do a little bit more of that because you have more time um, in that process. And we have had institutions that, as a part of their plan to plan, said, okay, one of our early steps is we need to do an audit of everything that is occurring in our first year. Uh, for instance, Mississippi State, who was with us last spring, is uh, uh, conducting that audit now. So, yeah. Yeah, we used to have an audit built into this academy, but the time is just too brief. So, you know, we had to kind of pull back a little bit. So it's a little bit more broad, the plan to plan, but you can definitely work toward developing the audit or, or map of what you have. It's worthwhile, I have to say, having done it and having seen others do it because there's so much. <laughs> oh, and there's a question from, um, about the academy versus the redesign. Yes, I mentioned the process. There's a, a process. Um, that is focused on redesigning the first year, that's where you go very in depth. Uh, so there are data that you, institutional data, there's some survey data, there, there are, they used to be dimension teams, but now they're not, right Brent? They're not dimension uh, teams? Principles. Principles, that's right. <laughs> so there's a set, a, a large set of principles that you're looking at and you have teams with chairs and co-chairs. They really go into every dimension of the first year of college. So you're looking at the academic experience, the co-curricular experience, but you're looking at it, you know, in a, a very, um, you're looking at it a very detailed way. In the academy, we're looking broadly at, you know, some of some of those ideas, but we're looking at them again broadly based on evidence, you know, evidence-based practices in higher education now. So, for example, when we talk about the curricular experience, we're looking at high-impact practices which include first year seminars, but it's very broad and we're giving you institutional examples. But if you go into the process, you would dig into your data and you would really begin to see some of the opportunities. So this is sort of like a primer for that in a way, that's how it's designed to lead you into that, into that process where you would have a larger team, you would have you know faculty, staff and students involved in it. You would make a commitment to do this over a lo much longer period of time. Our academy is only, four weeks, you know, versus the year or so that you would need to do this, this redesign process. And with the, the redesign, it is, as Steph said, it is a much more broad campus team. There are uh, a large number of individuals uh, involved with it. And Gardner works with you typically over the course of about a year to really do a lot of that audit and assessment of your uh, first year and you build a full action plan for implementation from that. And then we help you implement that. So um, it is a, 
a much more involved process, uh, uh, obviously. Uh, it is, yeah. This is a good way to get into that because you've got to build that, you know, internal uh, team um, and the momentum, you know, get that momentum started. And if you choose to do both, um, we will take this, we'll apply some of the fees from the academy towards the um, fees for the um, redesign process. So it's, it's the academy is a good way to get your toes wet and say, okay, is this something that we want to do to take the, and, and we can sort of help make that transition easier for you. Indeed. There's a question about the frequency of this academy, and we do offer it on an annual basis. Well, we'll be happy to stay on a few more minutes. We can go ahead and stop the recording and we'll see if there are any other personal questions that you all would prefer to ask of us. And we thank you so much. This has been a 